For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2017 Spring Camp Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Sunday morning, April the 16th, 2017. Nikki Pinson is the speaker of the service teaching on The Spirit of the Lord is Upon Me. Well, I want us to look in the Mark chapter 16. Thank you for being here this morning. I know you didn't have to be, but you chose to be. And uh, God's ordained you to be here. Um, only thing I miss, I'm not at my church this morning. I've been at for almost 39 years, but I have a, a good, able sister pastor. Lord, thank you. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Your word profits us, Lord. It profits us. And so, Lord, profit us this morning with your word and your spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Praise God. I want to talk to you about um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Um, This is something that's been so real to me. No matter where I go or where you go, the important thing is that the Spirit of the Lord be upon us. No matter what the situation, whether it's ministry or if it's some situation we're facing, if it's a, if it's a job, if it's a labor, if it's whatever it is, business deal, that the Spirit of the Lord be upon us. It makes all the difference. Well, in Mark chapter 16, we'll begin with... Um, Verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared... Have you, have you ever... Uh, God sent something in your life you want to share it with people and they act, they act so indifferent or just don't even believe you? After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. That's those two on the road to Emmaus. And they went and told it unto the residue, or the others again, and neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, there's only eleven now, Judas has gone out and hung himself. Unto the eleven, here I saw, look at this man, Judas, hung himself. Look what he could have been a part of. Look what he forfeited. I don't want to forfeit my place with the Lord. I don't want to miss out on what he's doing. Because these men went on to a glorious experience in the Lord and service to the Lord, but but Judas is on himself. And and that's the devil's business to get all of us to, in a sense, hang ourselves. That's what he wants. He'll lie to you. He'll uh, accuse you. He'll offer you things. Do whatever. And so afterward he appeared unto them as, as they said it me, and upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Hardness of heart. You know, Jesus, when they asked him about divorce, they said, well, Moses said it's okay for us to divorce. And he said, well, Moses did that because of your hardness of heart. And we have to be careful about our hardness of heart in every area of our life. And, and Jesus said unto them, verse 15, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And is that a suggestion or is that a command? Okay. Is that for the paid clergy or is that for all of us? Does it only happen behind the pulpit or is it to be wherever God places us? The mission field he's put you in. It may be, you may be, uh, there's a young man, a young black man who comes by and picks up our trash we're out in a rural area, you have to hire somebody that, you know, paid for that, and it's okay. And uh, 
I, I just I'm attracted to that man, the spirit of that man, and come I, I go out and talk to him when I can. And his father's a preacher, but he's and I prophesied to him. And I said, "You're a man of God. God's going to use you mightily. Doesn't matter whether you're driving a trash truck or what you're doing. Amen. It does not matter." Uh, it doesn't matter if you're uh, a young man out there keeping the sheep, and nobody thinks you're important enough even to ask you to come to the to the dinner with the man of God. It doesn't matter, praise God. I want to tell you, God knows your address, He knows your phone number. In fact, the hairs of your head are numbered, and He can find you when He's ready to find you. But don't don't get ahead of Him, praise God. He said, "Our hairs of our head are numbered." I don't know if that means every hair on your head has a serial number. When they fall out, he knows which one that is and crosses that one out. Or just how many is on your head. I don't know. You don't even know how many is on your head. But God knows. So what are you What are you getting frustrated over? What, what, what's your problem? You know, he knows. Praise God. It's like that uh, young man I told you about in jail. When uh, the Lord gave me a word for him, he was so frightened, scared, and and terrified and all that and, I, and uh, he asked me well how did you know and I said I didn't know but God knows and God knows if, if we can understand that he knows praise God what kind of God is, is he or would he be if he knows and he's not taking care of the situation a perfect love casts out all fear when we understand he loves us no matter what you're going through and you may be getting frustrated in the thing you're going through and because why? Why do we get frustrated? Well, a lack of faith and a lack of understanding. See, I, I'm getting off here, but that's okay. Uh, again, Romans 8.28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and call according to His purpose. We know that. But uh, the problem is what we think is good and what He says is good. We think good is that we're going to prosper, be in health, everything's going to be rosy. Uh, the kids are going to act right. The grandkids are going to make us proud and not have to bail them out of jail or whatever. Uh, the car is going to run forever. Or are we going to get a new one? Or, you know, some think, well, uh, my motor blew up my truck. Oh, hallelujah, I'm probably going to get a new truck. No, you may be walking. You know, just you, but he, for good. What is that good? That's Here's our problem. What is the good? And verse 29 says, For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. That's the good that he's working for us. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So we have our idea of good over here, but God has, and, and somehow, somewhere in this walk with God, our good, our thought of good, what we think is good, our estimation, our definition has to become his. Getting our our thoughts off of the world and the things of the world and begin to see what his what is his what is his good? It's one thing that we be conformed to the image of his son. Not that you everything goes like you want to in this life. You get that promotion, you get that job. See do you understand that's where the frustration comes in because our what we think is good is not the same as what he thinks is good. Because we're so worldly, earthly minded you know, it's all we we put it all in the package of this little short life we're living. I mean, it's short, folks. It's like a vapor. The scripture says when he's looking at the big picture of eternity, forever and ever and ever. And don't sell out forever and ever and ever for this little short life. Some people sell it out for a, a bowl of beans, you know, for the for the moment. Well, praise God. Now, and he said. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. That, that's, that's, you get on the ark or, you, or you're, you're going to die. One or the other. There's no in between. There's no gray areas. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And being honest, all of us being honest, we're not anywhere close to that. Is, am I telling the truth? Amen. When's the last time you laid hands on someone and that was sick and they recovered? About the closest we might get to some of this is speaking in tongues. But praise God for that. Okay. Praise God for speaking in tongues. That's how we edify ourselves. So glory to God. 
Now this is only this is only a, a brief summary of what God wants to do through our lives. To get the the full picture, we look at Jesus because He said, "The works that I do, greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father." So we look at Him, then we look in Acts, and we uh, particularly Acts, and we see this is what these are the signs that are going to follow. Verse 19, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. And that's where he is right now. Amen. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They're obeying the commandment. Oh, we're so busy trying to make money and be comfortable and live good and enjoy the things of life and live the American dream and our retirement, all, you know, all our ducks in a row. Y'all know what that means, all your ducks in a row? My ducks have never been in a row. <laughs> Except when I look out the window and see them. You have to be a parent to know what I'm talking about. All the ducks we have. And they do go in a row, but uh, my ducks have never been in a row. I listen to some people, oh, they got everything figured out. They got their insurance, their retirement, you know, their investments. Everything is all fixed. Praise God. If you know what Jesus said, it's very difficult for a rich man to enter heaven. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Uh, what does he mean in John 5.36? Now, I just have to look these up like you uh, do. 5.36, working with them, signs. And he that, uh, speaking of Jesus, but Jesus speaking, but I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So where is the works that are going to bear witness that God sent us? Where are they at this morning? See what we're talking about? Where are they at? And then in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 4, God also bearing them witness with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. And that last part of that verse gives of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. You find that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The Holy Spirit gives these gifts as He wills. So where are the signs that are supposed to follow us in this ministry? Uh, we forsaking all as the disciples did in following Him that doesn't mean you don't have a job somewhere. It doesn't mean you don't live in a house or whatever you live in. But your primary call, your primary focus is on this ministry that He's given to all of us. Not about ourselves, again, how comfortable we are, how, how pleasing things are to us. You know, all that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Um, I've told this, but one of the Wesley brothers... Uh, had, I mean, they were used to things being thrown at them and hurled at them and, and all the abuse because they lived all in Christ Jesus. And he, he was riding along, I think it's John, could have been Charles, but I think it's John, he's riding along on his horse, circuit rider. They kicked him out of the church. They couldn't preach in their church, the churches in England. And he came to him, nobody's thrown anything at me lately. And he got convicted, got off his horse, got down on the ground, and knelt down and said, Oh, God, forgive me. I don't know what I've done. But nobody's throwing anything at me. You understand that all that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So as he prayed on, he, <laughs> he felt a rock hit the back of his head. And he said, Praise God, I'm okay. I just went on this way. Um, thank you, Jesus. Now, can we... Can we do this? How do we do? How do we have these signs following? Uh, that's what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about um, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And uh, if you turn to Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, this is this sermon that this message is fresh. So that's why I brought my tablet with me, and the Lord said none of those. So here, Second Corinthians three five. 
Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to any, think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is, is of God. Yeah. What do you see in the church today? What do you see? Yeah. You, you, you see all this stuff they've got going. Yeah. Uh, I, I was years ago. I was sitting in a in a large large church in Dallas area. They were dedicated. Jimmy Swagger was there, and. Uh, it seats 5,000. It was packed. And the pastor said, I just believe something awesome is going to happen tonight. Oh, praise God. Lord, hallelujah. Only awesome thing that ever happened was while he was standing there, the electric curtains started parting. And there was a choir behind him. And that was it. That was it. That was all. He said, we're not sufficient in ourselves, but our sufficiencies of God. You, you go in the power of God. It's not about all the stuff that we go with. The colored lights, the smoke machines, the, all this, the PowerPoint, the... Uh, Y'all you know what I'm talking about. Um, verse 6, who also made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, <coughs> but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, the Spirit gives life. Information kills... But revelation, the Spirit gives life. And that's what we're after is life. Is that not right? We're after life. I don't want to sit and listen to a teaching or a sermon or special music or whatever it is if there's not life in it. Is, it, is there life in that? The Spirit gives life. Amen? Praise God. Now, if you will turn with me to Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Luke 4. Now, Jesus has just been baptized in water. Because of his obedience, when he comes up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descends upon him in the form of a dove and remains upon him. He is baptized in water first. When he comes up, he's baptized in the Holy Spirit. And his whole life changes. There's no miracles before that point. Are you hearing me? No miracles before that point. The same thing happened with his disciples. On the day of Pentecost, they become different men. You look in the Old Testament, and and the, especially the prophet Samuel said, uh, the Spirit of God is going to come upon you, and you'll be changed into a different man. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He changes us into a different person than what we were. That's why we have to have the Spirit of the Lord upon us. And so we see in chapter 4, verse 1, in Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, Full of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he received his baptism there, standing in the Jordan River when he comes up out of the water. He returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And then in <coughs> verse 14, <coughs> um, first I'm going to look at verse 5. And we'll be talking about power. And the devil taking Jesus up into a high mountain, one of the three temptations, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, the devil said unto him, I was sitting in the courtroom many years ago, a divorce and hearing from one of the young men in, in our church, and his wife that was divorcing him would tell us that she heard, when she'd be burning the trash, she'd hear a voice telling her to jump into the burning barrel. The devil, she said the devil told her to. And uh, that judge, looking at me, knowing I was sent to God, asked her, looked at me and said, I'll have you know the devil doesn't talk to people. He wanted me to hear that. I thought, buddy, you need to go read your Bible. <laughs> uh, all he said, the devil said unto Jesus, and he's going to talk to you. Is that right? Yes. He's going to talk to you. It's wrong when he talks to you, but if it's right, he's going to talk to you. All this power, Will I give you and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, to whomsoever I will give it. If you therefore will worship me, all shall be yours. And Jesus answered him, Get behind me, Satan, for it's written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. The temptation here is to embrace a wrong power, to operate by a wrong power instead of the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, he's led 
So far we see he's full of the Holy Ghost and led by the Spirit, but we don't see evidence of the power yet. The devil comes in because immediately he goes into the wilderness after his baptism. The Spirit drove him. He's there being tempted. And I'll tell you, the devil's going to offer you power and try to get ahead of God. But Jesus knows that he cannot accept this offer because there's something attached to it, some strings attached. Is that right? You can have it, but you have to do this. You can have power, but you have to go to the world to get the power. You have to be sufficient of yourself. You have to do these things instead of depending upon the Holy Spirit. You have to get an education. You have to go to training. You have to have charisma. You have to have uh, all these things yourself and operate out of your personality, out of your training, and so forth. When, and that is, but when the Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians, what has God chosen? He has chosen the weak, the lowly, the base, the things that are not, to bring to naught the things that are. That is what God has chosen. And the more we try to uh, in, uh, make ourselves more uh, attractive to this world and more powerful the things of the world, in other words, the more education, the more training, the more skills, the more whatever, we actually uh, make ourselves less useful to God by doing those things. Do you understand me? We had one time a man in the church who's always wanted to be the music director. And, uh, and I thought to him, no way you're going to be. But he would tell me, now we, we've got to offer God our best. No, God doesn't want your best. Do you understand? God doesn't want your best. Uh, God wants you to be a vessel that is available to Him that He can pour Himself through. He doesn't want your talent. Oh, you know, come to God, He'll use your talents, He's giving you talents, you know, and this is going to be... No, God doesn't want them. Look at Moses. Forty years raised as Pharaoh's daughter's son, said he was mighty in word and deed. And in that, he tries, he, he came into his heart, he knew he, he knew he was to deliver his people. In fact, he said, you read in, in Acts, when uh, Stephen's given his defense, he said he thought they would understand that he was supposed to. So he goes out and he tries to do it in his strength as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, ends up killing that Egyptian, burying him in the sand. And so the next 40 years, he, sent, he spends at the backside of the desert herding sheep. And when that's over at the burning bush, he's no longer mighty in word and deed. But he said, I'm slow of speech. And God says, you're finally, you're where I can use you. You know, you got this out of you. Why is it that God can't use some people until they're 70, 80 years old? Because it takes a lifetime to get that junk out of them when they're old and feeble. Yeah. <laughs> and the mind doesn't work anymore. Or, he, or why does he use, uh, we go to those jails and prisons, and, and but see, when all that glory has been stripped off of them, and they're, you know, expelling and all this, and they know they can't do it themselves, some of them still think they can, but you know, whatever God had to lead you through to get you to the point where you know you're not sufficient in yourself, yeah, yeah. and that you need the power of the Holy Ghost, you need the Spirit of the Lord upon you. If anything, a value is going to be accomplished. Praise God. And so, because he refuses to use the power of his world, and the devil's the prince of the power you know, of the world, he refuses, what do we read in verse 14? Let me say verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed him, does it say forever? For a season. For a season. Don't know how long that is. Don't know when it stops. You just, you know. Verse 14. Okay, so Jesus has refused that power the devil offered, the world offers, even to do the work of God. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and, and there went our fame of him through all the region round about. If you wait upon the power of God, though it's seen, it carries on. Well, I've been waiting 20 years. And, 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 well, keep on waiting. Praise God. It's a test. 
you know, wake up, realize it's a test. It hasn't happened yet. Well, it's a test. God's timing and your patience possess you, your souls. Now, 16. And Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And it doesn't say he just let the pages fall open and I'll read there. He found the place. Okay. Why did he find it? He's not orchestrating this. You know, I get very irritated. People be teaching preach and say, well, Jesus said this to get this reaction. No, he did not. He said, I never say a word I don't hear my father say. Right? I never do anything I don't see him do. He's not, he's being led by the Holy Spirit. So, he, and he reads, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can you say that this morning? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It makes all the difference. The sufficiency is not of us, it's of Him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh, praise God. If I was going to run, I'd run right there. I know the difference it makes, folks. I know the difference it makes. You can get under the bridges there in downtown Dallas where the homeless live. You've got all kinds of things going on. Uh, I was preaching there here a few weeks ago. There's a young man on the front there. They, we put out chairs. We, there's a lot of people helping. And he's seeing something I'm not seeing. Nobody else is seeing either. And he's doing all this, you know, and that's that distraction. And there's two guys sitting there, and I thought his husband and wife, but it wasn't his boyfriend boyfriend. And, uh, and they're, they're acting up, and there's stuff going on, and, and there's just some, I'm, you know, just a lot of confusion going on. One time it was so bad, but the Spirit of God came on me, and I told him to stop in the name of Jesus and behave, sit down, and shut up, and listen. Now, you don't, you just got to realize under there. But you know they did it. why they do it? Not because they're scared of me. Because the Holy Ghost, you know, the Spirit of the Lord comes. But under those bridges, you think, well, God can't do anything under there. You just there, you feed them and hurry and get out of there. One time it was uh, kind of late getting out of there and one of the other pastors said, you better get out of here. We're leaving. You better go too. No. It doesn't matter when if the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. You can see miracles under the bridges. You can see people healed, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. One time I was, I was teaching on the Holy Spirit, and there's a, a young black man sitting there on his bicycle listening. I mean, he was listening. And I, and I felt it. I felt the Lord say, and I told him, come over here. I said, come I'm going to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. So this Hispanic pastor was there. He came over there and we prayed for him. I can't tell you he spoke in tongues and fall out, fell out in the dirt. We'd say, don't fall out in the dirt. In the Spirit, you know. Uh, so thank God if you fall out here, you got carpet. But, uh, and again, pray when we got through, the Hispanic pastor said, I've got fire. I broke my arm. You know, well, if the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, it doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter if we're in the jail. You know, some people think, well, all we can do in jail is get them to make a profession of faith. You know, be happy about it. No. You can see the Spirit of God move on. It doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're in Walmart. It doesn't matter where you are, who it is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, or He has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Make sure you're preaching to the poor. When John came, sent his, John was in prison, he sent two of his men over there and said, Are you really the Christ? That's amazing, John. You, you knew, you said that the Lord showed you the one the Spirit, the sin is going to remain upon, and that was Him. And now you're questioning. See, when, sometimes when life's going to sire for us, we begin to question things we shouldn't be questioning. And Jesus said, you go back and tell Him the, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And then you tell Him you're seeing signs and wonders. Okay. And He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This is, there's a world of brokenhearted people that need to be healed. And they don't need to be hammered on all the time. 
and told how they're going to hell and how sorry they are and how they, they're broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives. They're in bondage. They need to come out of the bondages, whatever physical, spiritual, financial, whatever the bondages are. Let God take care of that. And recovering the sight to the blind. They can't see, folks. I don't know what it means spiritual and physical, but they can't see. And God has to open their eyes of understanding to set at liberty them that are bruised. There's a world of bruised people. And they need to be set at liberty. They've been hurt. You can't live on in this life and not be hurt. Wounded. Have a wounded spirit to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on them. I had a, I heard an awesome message one time by me and Clinton, and he said, and he closed the book. That was the title of the message. And, uh, you know, I, I can't give it all to you, but the book's in here. You know, no, the book's in, better be in here. And he closed this physical book, but the book was in here. And he could meditate and muse over this book because it's in here. Thy word, if I hid my heart, that I might not sin against God. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. It's beautiful. You read, you can read about in other countries where they're under such tremendous persecution. And they have to know that word. And sometimes they just cut scriptures out, pass souls around. You learn that one scripture, or maybe a page out of a Bible. And uh, we've got Bibles everywhere. He closed the book, praise God. And uh, so he sat down. And he began to say to them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in years. I want to tell you, God still wants us, that scripture to be fulfilled in their ears. To you and me. He wants it fulfilled. Is it being fulfilled? Can you say you're part of that? Are you too busy trying to make another dollar? You know, another day, another dollar makes me want to holler. Are you still trying to do that? You ever get your income tax back and think you're rich? How long does it last? Not very long. And all bear men witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, It's not this Joseph's son. And he said unto them, You will surely say unto this, unto me, this proper position, heal yourself. <coughs> Whatsoever you've done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. And he said, Very I say, you no know, prophet is accepted in his own country. Now, uh, I'm going to need to wake the sister up, please. It's okay. I don't want her to fall out of no prophet is accepted in his own country. Now, verse 28, And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon the city was built, that they might cast him down, down headlong. Anybody try to throw you off a cliff yet? <laughs> Would you quit it? Quit preaching if they did? I know preachers that... They, I one called me and said, well, we're going to close the church. I said, why? Well, we only got 40 people there. Mm -hmm. Well, who's trying to throw you off a cliff? Have they drove you out of the sea and stoned you and left you for dead yet? But you're going to quit because you only got 40 left. At that time, I told him, said, we'd love to have 40 people where we're at. Send them over here. We'll take them. And another one tell me, he said, well, I'm just going to have to give it up. Uh, piano. We lost our piano player. Oh, you did. <laughs> Who played the piano for Jesus? Who was playing the piano on the day of Pentecost? Foolishness, folks. It's foolishness. You know why they're saying those things? Because the Spirit of the Lord is not upon them. You say, well, you're awful hard. No, I'm telling you the truth. Is the Spirit of the Lord upon you? Things will change when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. If you've got time to seek Him, if you've got time to let Him flow through you now, there's something the Lord has been teaching me and myself in, in ministry, it's not my preparation that's going to get the job done. It's being a vessel open to let the Spirit flow through us. That's what it is, praise God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And so that but he passing through the midst of them in his way and came down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and taught them in, on the 
Sabbath days, and they were astonished at his doctrine. For his word was with what? Power. Well, how did he get that power? Well, praise God. He, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. And you know, they, said, they would say, well, your word, you don't talk like they talk, the religious leaders. You have authority. There's power when you talk. Praise God. Why? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What, what do we have to do with you? you? You came to destroy us. I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. Remember the seven sons of Sceva tried to cast that devil, that one devil out of one man and that devil said, he said, I hear you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. And he said, well, I know Paul, I know Jesus, but who are you? But what does this devil say? I know who you are. I know who you are. Why does he know who he is? Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. And the only thing a devil, demon, or whatever, a sickness or whatever recognizes is the Spirit of the Lord upon us. The anointing is the only thing he recognizes. The only thing he has to obey. The only thing he has to obey. Praise God, but he will obey that. I'll take your words. He, he said, I only say what I hear my father say. If we come to the point where what I, we only say what we hear the father say, there's going to be some power there, and there's going to be some things happen, and some people are going to be set free and healed or whatever. Yes. Signs are going to follow. Amen. Praise God. Well, I don't know where all the signs are going. You know, they call them cessationists. And they said that's all cease. And the reason they say it is because they don't see it where they're at. And why don't they see it with that? Because the Spirit of the Lord's not upon them. They're so full of their stuff, you know, their religious stuff they're doing. Uh, you say, well, you're being hard. Well, somebody needs to be hard. Jesus was hard on them. I'm not, I'm not Jesus, but you know it's the truth. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold your peace, come out of him. So the, this, this devil knows who he is. Now, notice he doesn't have to smell his breath and know he's got a demon. He doesn't have to look in his eyes. He doesn't. There doesn't have to be any kind. Of, there's no manifestations here. There's none of that. Uh, I'm not saying there wasn't. Sometimes it's when the lunatic boys wallowing on the ground and foaming and all that. I'm not saying there wasn't. But there's a presence came in that synagogue, never been in there before. And uh, this man has been able to hide in there. I don't know how old he is. For all these years, he's been hiding in there, and nobody knows the difference. I don't know. He might have been a song leader. Uh, he might have been a deacon. But he's got, he's got a devil in him, and they don't know he's got a devil in him. And they wouldn't have known if Jesus hadn't come in there, and the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus, and, and the devil exposed himself. He, you know, he spoke out. Uh, don't you know that interrupted their wonderful service? <laughs> don't you know that this... Messed up everything. Praise God. Is the Lord, uh, is He disturbed by that? No. He's there to help. He, he's going to help this man. And and so he's, Jesus rebuked him, hold your peace, and he came out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were amazed, and they spoke among themselves, What a word is this for with authority and power? He commands the unclean spirit, and they come out. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we see what God does uh, because through Him, because the Spirit of the Lord is upon Him. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus reveals to us in this passage of Scripture and to others how He can do what He does and say what He says. Jesus did nothing, not one thing. Not one thing did He do and not one thing did He say, not even a word outside the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said and did nothing out of his own ability or mind. Nothing. All that Jesus did and said came out of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Nothing was from him or out of him. The Holy Spirit was not Jesus' helper. Now, if you have some translations, you'll read in John chapter 14 when he's called a confidence said helper. Let me say something to you this morning. He is not our helper. Like I'm doing something, he's going to come along and help me do it. Are you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Oh, Jesus is my co-pilot. Then you're in trouble. 
I, I heard a message, and I've said this before. I'll say it again. It's called Ten Shackles in a Shirt by Paris Reedhead. Write that down if you've got something, if you have it, and listen to that message. It's called The Message of the 20th Century. Paris Reedhead. Ten Shackles in a Shirt. In that awesome message, he, he, there's this young preacher comes in. He's got a great church. He comes in and says, well, I think you've got something I can add to my ministry and make my church bigger. And uh, he, he said, the Holy Spirit. And he said, so how do I get this? And he said, well, brother, I'm going to tell you something first. You need to get out of the driver's seat and, sit and, pack and give the keys to Jesus. And he said, no, i tell you what you really need to do. You need to get in the trunk and let him lock you in. That's what you need to do. He's not your co-pilot. He's not your helper. It's not that you and I plan things and devise things and figure out things and make a big program, you know, big uh, big day and all this stuff. And That's not what it is, folks. And then we pray and ask God to bless it. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. He didn't read it out of a book. He didn't, you know, all this stuff. You understand what I'm saying? He's not your helper. Calls him a comforter. Because everyone in here needs comforting. I don't care who you are, how long you walk with God, every day you live and breathe, you need a comforter. Because this life is hard. And nobody comforts you like Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. Well, uh, he's not your helper. He was a source of the anointing of God. He was the one who led Jesus, empowered Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who set Jesus apart. The word anointed actually means to be set apart. And he anointed Jesus to set him apart. The Holy Spirit is the one who gave Jesus the words of the Father to speak and show him what the Father was doing so he could do the same. Jesus said, I, I said what the Father taught me to say. Now that's not meaning that Jesus went to class in heaven before he came to this earth. That's not what it's saying. But as he comes to every situation, you and I come to every situation, he said, don't practice what you're going to say for in that hour the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. And uh, one, one time there was a, a church near us, and they had a soul winning class, trying everybody how to win souls. Really meaning getting the members. And so they were, this, a man told this. And so he's out and working on his truck. And these guys, they came in twos, they come by and they're asking questions. He's under there working on his truck. And they're asking questions and every question the answer is yes. So they get him on a roll here. So he figures out every, it's yes every time. He's trying to work on it. Yes. And finally said, do you, do you want to receive Jesus? He said yes. They, you know, that, that's, and he said, wait a minute. I do not. And get out of here. You know, just tricking people into it and that kind of thing. Uh, that's what you have to do when the Spirit of the Lord is not upon you. I think the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. It would be like the day of Pentecost. He, he's preaching along. They, they, they say, what must we do to be saved? They're pricked in their heart. What must we do to be saved? Nobody's having to give an altar call and tell them, oh, you better get down here and repeat the sinner's prayer. You might die on the way home. None of that. When I was a little boy, I was growing up in the church there in Dallas, and uh, they had some young guys, students from the Bible school came, and it was at night, and they were preaching. One was preaching on the coming of the Lord, and the trumpet's going to sound about that time. They were back there, and they flicked off the lights, and one of them blew a trumpet. I got down there. I mean, I got saved. The truth is, I got saved every, every Sunday night. I needed to, thank God. Some people don't have to ride the altar to heaven, but that's okay, whatever it takes to get there. Amen? Get there. So, uh, hallelujah. He, he by, the, by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, Jesus knew what the Father See, the Father can talk to him. He can talk to you and me through the Holy Spirit, right? Revelation only comes by the Holy Spirit. I wish, I'm not going to have time to, to, to tell you all that, but I don't think. Um, now, why was it necessary for the Holy Spirit to be upon Jesus and to anoint him? Philippians chapter 2 says 
that Jesus emptied himself. Is that right? Made himself no reputation, he emptied himself. He did not uh, consider uh, the equality with God a thing to be grasped. He let go of that and he emptied himself and he came in the form of a, a man, a servant. Is that right? So he came here just like you and me. He can't do any more than you and I can do. Until what? Until the Spirit of the Lord is upon him and has anointed him. Then he can do. Of course he lived, and the Spirit was given to him without measure. You say, well that's only Jesus. Uh, one time uh, in our, we have a Christian school, and one of uh, the young ladies, uh, students was really doing some wicked things, and her, her father came, it's actually her adoptive father came, and I was talking, and I, said, I told him, I said, well your daughter's wicked. I probably shouldn't have said it, but oh, he got mad. He said, well, that's only one man walked on the water. It was Jesus. You know. Now, that, that's our attitude. I can't do what he did because I'm not Jesus. But I correct him and said, no, there's two walked in the water. Isn't that right? Anybody know who the other was? How many times did he walk on the water? Twice. Jesus had to pull him back up and he walked back to the ship on the water. And and so he he received the Spirit without measure. In other words, no limitation on the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't you like to live like that? Well, I can't. I'm not Jesus. What did he say? The works that I do, where he works in me, shall he do? Because I go to my Father. What's he going to do when he gets the Father? Send the Holy Spirit back. You and I can have the Spirit of the Lord upon us without measure. Praise God. We can. We are to have. He expects us to have. That's what he wants. If you get your mind, get our minds off our little trivial junk that's going on, that's distracting us constantly. You know, so you're not going to be president of the United States after all. You figured that out. <laughs> you're not even going to be a senator. Probably not even going to be on the school board. So what? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Practice God. Uh, he emptied himself. And therefore, he needed, just like he became like us, and the same was available to him. Now, in John 6, chapter 3, Jesus said, It's the Spirit that gives life, right? The flesh, the power of the flesh, prophets, what? Nothing. Go ahead and do all this stuff you're doing. Do all that, all this crazy stuff that, that's being done. But the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they're life. He spoke with power and authority, didn't he? Can you speak that way? I can't, you can't, unless the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Right? Praise God. Well, thank you, Jesus. Now, in Luke 24, 44, Jesus said, I send the promise of my Father upon you. He said, the Spirit, listen to that. I send the promise of my Father upon you. What did Jesus say? The Spirit of the Lord is up on me. Same thing. Can we have the same thing? Can we have the same thing? Yes. Spirit of the Lord upon me. But tarry until you are due with power from where? On high. If you turn me to Acts chapter 1, and we'll get ready here to um, get to the end of this. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And being assembled together with them, this is Jesus, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says, He you have heard of me. Don't go out and try to do it on your own, out of your own ability, your strength, your skills, your talent, your whatever that you think is going to, you know, oh Lord, I just offer you my talents. Good, you're going to take them and bust them. Well, I don't like that. Well, that's too bad. He can't use it. You mean all this I've done all my life, my PhD I earned, which I have not earned. All this stuff, and I can't use it. Exactly. You say, well, I'm real good at this. Well, that's 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 just wonderful that you're real good at it. Are you willing to give it up? There's some men that were really good fishermen, but they left their nets and followed Jesus. There was a tax collector, a really good tax collector, got up from the table and left it all, followed Jesus, and he didn't rake the money in his pocket before he left. And... Uh, See, we think, well, have you ever, I know this, they, they pass out these question errors, and this, you're going to find your gifts. So you fill out this and answer all the questions, they feed it in the computer, and, and they'll tell you what your gifts are. Don't be discouraged if your gifts are making cakes. 
That's not the gifts he's talking about. And there's no questionnaire to fill out for those gifts that are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Is that right? There, those nine gifts there, there, there's no questionnaire. He gives them. We're to seek earnestly the best gifts. Yeah. Make ourselves available. Have the Spirit of the Lord. You're not going to get a gift not of the Holy Ghost unless the Holy Ghost is upon you. It's not going to happen. Praise God. Well, he said, but you've heard of me, John, truly baptized with water. That's the baptism of repentance. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. There's a lot of people that are hung up in the uh, baptism of repentance. Acts 19, those at Ephesus. He said, what have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? So we had not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Well, who's doing that? Why, why haven't they heard? Who, what preacher are they sitting under? And so he said, well, what have you been baptized to? The baptism of John. They were hung up in the baptism of repentance. He said, there's another baptism you need to get. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the baptism of Jesus. Don't be hung up in the baptism of John. Be you know, go on to the baptism of Jesus because he's the one that baptized the Holy Ghost. Because that's what John said. The baptizer of the repentance said, It comes one after me, it's my or not, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and said, What you're seeing and hearing, see there's things to see and hear when the Holy Ghost is moved, is that Jesus, the right hand of the Father, pouring out what you see and hear. He's, he's doing this. He's the baptizer. Uh, men are sometimes involved. Yes. Women. Men and women. They're involved. But he's the one that baptizes. Oh, when this gets so and so over here, we're going to baptize. Well, it's Jesus. If I just get to the great healing evangelist, I'll get healed. But who's the healer? He's the great physician. But he uses people. And they were come together. They asked him and said, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Now, what's their mind on? Earthly things, earthly kingdom, politics. And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. I want to say this don't get too hung up in end time stuff. That's not where it's at. That's not the focus. The focus is not angels, it's not fallen angels, it's not portals, it's not whatever people want. Here's what it is, verse 8. I'm saying this on the authority of the Word of God. Verse 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's where our focus must be. What does it matter who the Antichrist is? What does it matter what his name is? I want to be baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. I want the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what's important. Watch Fox News to a week. I don't have TV. I have one, but it, it's not uh, hooked up to anything. So, uh, Deborah and I were sitting in a place, and Fox News is on there. I used to be a Fox News addict. And you know what? I was sitting there watching. I said, my goodness, this is the same news I was watching last time I saw it. They're still talking about the same stuff. They still own it, you know. Uh, what does it matter? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Now, uh, what is that word? Does anybody know what word Paul said? I, I better not. I better not. Unto. You shall be witnesses unto me. Have you ever heard someone preach or be witnesses for me? They're misquoting that. You're never going to be a witness for him. That puts you in control. You're doing something for Jesus. You know, you're, you're orchestrating this thing. You'll be a witness unto me. It changes the whole dynamics. The whole meaning. If you've got a translation that says for me, you, you, you need to get another translation. Or, or mark that word out and put unto You'll be a witness of You will be what I am. You will do what I did. That's what he means. You'll be a witness unto me. You're going to become what I am. And doesn't that line up with everything? Christ formed in us. Change the same image as Christ. Romans 8, 29. For whom he formed, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. It's not so you can witness for him. It's so you can be what he is. Praise God. We're, he, he, he goes on. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul said, I've determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And that's what it is. It's nice to have counseling programs. It's nice to give food out. We do that at our church. 
It's nice to give homeless people a place to live. We do that. But it's Christ. I determined, why, why would you do that? Because he made it very plain. I was hungry, you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was in prison, you visited me. I was sick, you visited me. I was a stranger, you took me in. We can hang, we can hang in there with most of them until it gets to that one. I was a stranger, you took me in. Come on now. How are you doing on that one? Well, I'll pay for your motel room for two or three nights. <laughs> Never mind. And they ever, you know, praise God, just be led of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, I'm afraid to kill me and steal everything I got. I don't know. Uh, one, one time we was coming back 500 miles in Mexico, and Sister Pastor and I, there was another one. We stopped there in Victory Outreach, and so they put us in the house, and the director and his wife were there, but they're in the bedroom with a locked door. <coughs> And we're out there, and it came to me, this one guy, I don't know, I, I really believe it's the Lord I saw this in the street. This guy's going to stab me tonight. You think I'm crazy, but it, it so unnerved me that I got in the bed against the wall and made the assistant pastor on the one on the outside. <laughs> I'm taking care of number one. I did not sleep the whole night. I thought about getting up and going, locking myself in the car. I prayed in tongues. I did everything I knew to do. And the next morning I got up and I told Jose, I said, I told him what happened. He said, you know what? I felt the same thing. And so we told the pastor and his wife, said, oh, well, that's the kind of people we take in here. Well, big deal. You're behind the locked door. We're not, you know. But I don't know why I'm telling you that. <laughs> oh, because taking the strangers in. Um, you'll receive power. Praise God. Receive power. Um, praise God. Well, I think that's enough. Uh, I was going to read John 14, some out 15 and 16, what the Holy Spirit will do for you, what He does for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You want to do that, do it. what? You do want to do that, do it. No, I, I'm going to stop. I uh, feel like I should. Will you stand with me? Praise God. And it's a good part here. Now you heard the word. Let me tell you something about ministry. There are two parts to ministry. Minister the word and minister the spirit. If you just go and teach but you don't minister the spirit, I mean the gifts of the Holy Spirit by laying on hands or speaking into a person or whatever. You don't allow you only get half of it. Are you hearing me? You only get half of it. Look what Jesus did. All through His ministry, He ministered the Word and the Spirit. Sometimes the Spirit first healing people, cast out devils, then the Word. Or He ministered the Word, then He do the works. He said the words and the works. You've got to have the words and the works. Where are the works at? And so this is where we have the works. And I, I want to ask you this morning, resurrection morning, Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go away. If I don't go away, the Comforter will not come. The Holy Spirit. If I go away, I'll send him to you. Do you have him this morning? Is the Spirit of the Lord upon you? Has he anointed you? Is he anointing you? Well, 40 years ago, I gave a message in tongues. That's wonderful. But where are you at today? I witnessed to someone two years ago. Well, that's good. Where are you at today? He said, The Holy Spirit will be in us rivers of living water flowing out of our animal's being. What's that for? It's, for? it's for us to minister. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given. But He's given now, isn't He? Jesus breathed on Him and said, Receive you, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. Your situation may never get better. You may not like to hear that, but it may never get better. But he told he told Paul, My grace is sufficient. And when I'm weak, then I'm strong because the power of Christ rests upon me. And some people are so hung up on their situation getting better and they're angry with God and they're disappointed and they're whatever they are. And missing out on the better. The better. They're like Martha. They're, they're covered about with many things, but Mary's chosen that good thing. 
and it shall not be taken away from us. You want the better thing this morning? And if, if whatever you're so frustrated over and concerned about does get fixed, guess what's going to happen tomorrow? You know what's going to happen tomorrow? A new thing's going to rise up. And there you go off on that one. And then you pray, you fast, you seek God, you speak faith, you know. And then it's get taken it's taken care of. And two weeks later, you got a new one going. And never doing anything for God because you're always... I, I, I'm sorry, we are always caught up with this, our life on this earth. Instead of focusing on what God is wanting to do in us and through us. Let me tell you something about your body. It's going to, as it gets older, is it going to be aches and pains? Probably. Your eyesight may dim? Probably. Uh, you may lose some of your investment. You may lose your job. You, I, you know, I've had a lot of those things happen. And we may wonder if He's going to restore the kingdom at this time, but that's not what's important. The important thing is you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be a witness unto me. You'll become what I am. Praise God. How's that working for you? Where is that at this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, let faith rise in our hearts, Father. Let faith rise in our hearts. Lord, you, you went back to heaven and left this whole thing in the hands of a small group of people and the Holy Ghost in the room. And, and you trusted. That's where you left it. You trusted that. And Lord, this morning you are the same thing. A small group on this earth compared to the great numbers and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, let your Holy Spirit just come in this room this morning. In a mighty way. He said, The Holy Spirit's with you, but He shall be in you. He's with you, but He shall be in you. The world can't see Him. The world can't deceive Him. But He's with you. But He shall be in you. Is He in you this morning? Or are you full of the Holy Ghost? You can't be led by the Holy Spirit unless you're full of the Holy Ghost. Not really. You can't have the power. You can't fulfill and all. Oh, there's a church that come out of Dallas. There's a church called Destiny. That's a big thing. You're your Destiny. You're Destiny. I'll tell you what our destiny is. We become nothing so that he can become everything. Amen. Uh, that I may decrease and he may increase. That's your destiny. Less of me, more of him. Really, there ought to be none of me, all of you. Praise God. Well, we want to pray for some. If you want prayer, if you come and see him, um, pray for you this morning. Believe God. If you, if you need a fresh touch of the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, whatever you need healing, you know, this is the second part of it right here. Praise God. And uh, we've still got time before lunch. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You can still come if you're back there and you know it means on you to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God touched us. At your will, this is what you want to do, Father. This is what you want to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.